Hi there and welcome back to another episode at Station Road and we're just hot off the heels of the last video I put up which took well over a month to get there. So as I mentioned in the previous video, we're going to look at setting up some cameras so that I can keep an eye on what's going on in the hidden part of the fiddle yard, which is just behind me here. Now, I don't use block detection or anything of that nature on the station road layout. And of course that would be one more sort of logical way I guess of keeping track of your trains and where they're actually located on your layout. Now I'm going for a more simplistic sort of route and of course other than the locomotives being DCC controlled uh, the track itself is very much kind of an analog type arrangement in terms of uh, point motors and all of that nature. So there is no sort of isolated sections or block areas where I can detect locomotive or train movements. So after completing the fiddle yard here and as you can see half of it is actually going to be scenic the other half will be hidden it will be quite tricky to be able to identify what trains or locomotives will be on which tracks so the idea behind having some cameras that will be actually hidden from view I'll be able to identify what locomotives slash rolling stock and train formations will actually be in the hidden section. So what I'll do is we'll jump into where one of these cameras is likely to be positioned and then I'll also sort of cover what options I kind of looked at in the way of cameras and we'll take it from there. So here's a view of the hidden fiddle yard from one end of the layout and as you can see if I fill up that yard it's going to be very difficult for me to know which locomotive or rake of stock is on what track. So I have the LED lighting strip up and running which does help in terms of a little bit of visibility. So the idea is roughly about here where my finger is pointing now is where I plan to set up one of these cameras. This area here will actually be more baseboard through here and a lift out section so the camera will be hidden and then I'll also place a camera down at the other end of the fiddle yard as well. So I was looking at a couple of various different options for setting up a camera for the hidden part of the fiddle yard as I just had shown you before and my initial thought was just to use one of these very cheap and cheerful cube cameras now this is not the Polarig cube this is just a very budget knockoff version they do say it's meant to be full HD but I don't actually think it is and I think it set me back about 20 New Zealand dollars so for a tenner you could buy this. Now the idea behind this and these are the plugs you've got an AV plug plus you've also got a USB plug here. If you take the little micro SD card out of this and just plug it into your computer and switch on your camera software it just basically works like a monitor and that was the idea initially and I would hook it up to the laptop that I use for controlling the trains. The only problem is is the laptop has only got so much screen space on it so I kind of felt it would be a bit of an issue dealing with controlling the train and also having up a video window showing the fiddle yard at the same time. I tried this out and the quality was really actually pretty rubbish and particularly in the fiddle yard area where there's not a lot of light apart from the LED strip lighting I've installed it really was a bit hopeless so I am actually going to go down this route now this is really 
not that expensive so what we have here is a reversing camera kit for a car now this is actually for a heavier vehicle because it comes with two cameras so the idea is that this might go on the back of a bus or a large van or something like that and it comes with a seven inch lcd screen so i thought why not use that and of course hook it up to a 12 volt power supply and away you go so i've tested it a little bit uh, not actually in situ and everything's all working quite well now this sent me back a grand princely sum of 114 New Zealand dollars so you can pick these up on the internet cheap as chips you know you can get much cheaper ones than this but I sort of thought I'd go for a slightly more expensive one because of the image quality and also the low lighting now these cameras come with a LEDs for low light conditions the kit comes with two cameras so we've got the two cameras there comes with the 17 inch display which has got a mounting bracket so I can mount that onto a control panel which just works out perfectly and it also comes with 15 meters of cable and it's all pre-wired up with all the right connectors and everything ready to go and I have just used once again as I've mentioned in the past I'm one for hoarding old power adapters and this is a 12 volt DC power adapter uh, originally it powered what looks to be a Ethernet hub or wireless modem one or the other and I've just put in one of those pluggable terminal blocks for connecting up the power so we'll go ahead and we'll start installing this and we'll start to see how it works out now of course what we're going to have to do is we can't just install this camera without first seeing what the viewpoint is going to be so we need to sort of move this around until we get a optimal viewpoint so to do that of course we're going to have to hook everything up now I'll try and get this in to the shot right so we can see now we've got this going of course the, the minor disadvantage of course using a reversing camera is of course you can see the parking guides and I think I've had a look and I don't think I can disable them on this particular screen so anyway i'm going to just fiddle with this until i find the best spot so uh, it's probably a bit hard for me to show this on the video now i've just put a piece of timber over here because this will actually be covered over it will actually have a, um, a lift out section with some back scene industrial buildings on it but i've needed to put that there just to sort of get the lighting right you know i'm happy with that and we'll go ahead and install this particular camera here and see how it goes so based on that footage we just saw this is the position of the camera and there's still enough clearance there for this other track and when the lift out section sits over the top it'll just sit over the top of that quite nicely so we're just going to mark around this area here and drill a hole through here for our cables to run through Right, and just right so there we go uh, had to drill a slightly larger hole screw was too short for going through what actually is a there's a bit of a double layer here unfortunately uh, that I've forgotten about but it's in there it doesn't need to be like it doesn't need to be massively secure it's got to keep that position and uh, it should be fine 
So that's camera one installed. So at this end of the fiddle yard, the camera is going to be positioned just the other side of those curves and of course looking back up this way. So it might be a bit tricky to video this one uh, just because it's in underneath there but we'll have a look once I've installed it. So we've now got the other camera installed and tucked in there and with ample clearance for rolling stock. So now it's time to hook it all up. So there we have it, we now have the screen which is just temporarily installed to the side of the baseboard and this is kind of where my control area I think will be but yeah it works out quite well and by flicking this button you can switch cameras so we're now looking at the other end of the yard so I might possibly install some additional lighting in under here just to make it a little bit clearer but you know for an easy sort of solution if you've got areas of your layout that are inaccessible or at least hidden from view and you need to know what trains are on what track then this sort of makes for a reasonably good solution so I certainly hope you found this video useful and I certainly found it interesting from the point of what my initial choice of camera was going to be and using my laptop or at least maybe some form of computer system in order to visualize what was going on in the fiddle yard. Now another downside of course to that little cube camera that I initially looked at apart from the fact that the price was exceptional is of course you do actually need a TV screen or a computer in order for it to actually work. So that in itself can of course be limiting for some people hence why buying a complete system in other words a reversing camera kit everything is all self-contained and you don't actually need a computer at all to get some cameras up and running around the hidden parts of the layout so before i go i thought i'd just touch on some youtube slash station road channel housekeeping and one of the things I've actually noticed is I've spotted quite a few comments from people that are going back quite a considerable way and I'm talking months and sometimes eight or nine months and I just haven't had a chance to get to them or to respond to those comments and feedback and I'll say now my sincere apologies if you have sent me a feedback or asked a question and it's fallen on deaf ears now it's not my intention to run silent on the channel in any way it's just I just haven't had a chance yet to really sort of sit down and go through a number of these more historical comments and feedback and questions and be able to respond to everyone I will definitely be endeavoring to respond to as many subscribers and people who have commented as much as possible and as soon as possible as well. So I shall leave it there for now. Do please take care everyone and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.